This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Well, Jennifer Lopez, she has her newsletter on the J-Lo, and she is detailing how she was proposed to by Ben Affleck, and she said that, uh, you know, after 18 years after they called her for their previous engagement, she talked about the proposal, how it went down, and their second chance at true love. She started the newsletter, Did You Ever Imagine Your Biggest Dream Could Come True? Saturday night, while at my favorite place on earth, in the bubble bath, my beautiful love got on one knee and proposed. I was taken totally off guard and just looked in his eyes, smiling and crying at the same time, trying hard to get my head around the fact that after 20 years, this was happening all over again. I was quite literally speechless, and he said, is that a yes? I said, yes, of course that's a yes. I don't think any man who ruined as many superhero characters as Ben Affleck should have Jennifer Lopez. He ruined Daredevil. He ruined Batman. He doesn't deserve Jennifer Lopez. But that's just my hot take. But the, but I wonder if you get proposed to a couple times, do you compare the proposal? Because remember, A. Rod did it on the beach when the sun was right in the right position. When you ruin two superhero characters, two iconic superhero characters, do you compare those two? Hmm? Do we compare how bad he did Daredevil to how bad he did Batman? I didn't see Daredevil, so I don't know. Okay. Well, she enjoyed it. She said she was smiling so big, tears were coming down her face. And she was feeling so incredibly happy and whole. It was nothing fancy at all, but it was the most romantic thing I could have ever imagined. Just a quiet Saturday night at home. Two people promising to always be there for each other. And that's tell the most her, important tell thing. her watch Ben playing Daredevil or Batman. I bet she rethinks this decision. Yeah, stop it, man. As long as she's happy, man. That's the most important thing. She's happy. Now she's got that green diamond engagement ring that we talked about that's worth definitely more than $5 million, maybe more than $10 million. Jeez. And she said green has always been my lucky color, and now for sure it always will be. Well, I'm glad Ben gave it away because he held on too long. If he holds on to it too long, he'll think he's Green Lantern. We don't need him ruining another, <laughs> Yo, ruining another up, superhero man. character. Okay. All right, and Viola Davis has a memoir coming out, and she details that after she was cast in How to Get Away with Murder, she got a lot of scrutiny over her looks. She said that fellow black actors uh, thought that she just wasn't pretty enough to be able to pull it off. She said following her casting, a friend had come to her after overhearing several actors and actresses, all of whom were black, say that she wasn't pretty enough to pull it off and she did a whole um, profile in the New York Times where she discusses this as well and she said she had had a slew of experiences around her race and her deeper skin tone within the predominantly white industry and uh, she said that you know the experience was unlike the other colorist races and anti-black criticism because she couldn't shake this feedback she also details on her childhood experiences with racism she details an anti-black attack in the third grade and this was in central falls rhode island they were a group of eight or nine boys who would always insult her throw stones and bricks at her one day they physically caught her and they pinned her arms back and the leader of the group who was black but identified as portuguese he was cape verdean and black uh, he called her ugly and a black effing N-word, and when she responded, you're black too, he punched her. Mm. How do you have to look to play a law professor? That's what she played on How to Get Away with Murder, a law professor. How do, how do they expect her? I don't get it. Like, what does that mean? She wasn't pretty enough to, to play the role. And imagine these are your peers who are working with you in Hollywood and understand the struggles of what it is to get these roles and knowing how talented she is to hear that people are saying things like that. I just want to know how do, you, how, do, how do you have to look to play a law professor? Like, that's the question I would ask mm -hmm. them. Like, I don't get it. All right, now, Tyra Banks, she has deleted her Twitter account, and people are trying to speculate on why. Now, Kate Taylor from Insider uh, mentioned a probable cause of that Twitter departure, according to the writer. They, she's saying that... Uh, Tyra Banks left the platform right after she reached out to her with questions for the expose that she did on America's Next Top Model. The work was called Tyra Banks Wanted Amer America's Next Top Model to Fix Fashion. Now some contestants say the show was psychological warfare. So it focused on the contestants of the show, their time on that stage, and how it was uh, very hard on models, even going as far as giving harsh criticisms concerning the models' bodies and setting up difficult challenges. And uh, several contestants of the show have opened up about the psychological impact of the show. So she said she reached out to Tyra Banks to get some fact-checking done and to get a comment, and then Tyra Banks deleted her Twitter. She said, it could be unrelated. What can I say? And uh, Tyra Banks also has been facing backlash from Dancing with the Stars. People are like on Twitter, I don't know if you guys have seen this, and they're blaming her for Disney's decision to move that next season from ABC to Disney+. Plus. It was recently announced by the producers, and fans did not have a good reaction of that. Uh, it was in uh, season 29, 
and a lot of viewers were saying that they were blaming Tyra Banks. But you know how the Twitter mob can get. Well, why do they act like Disney Plus is a downgrade? Like, I watch majority of all my TV consumption comes from streaming services. Yeah, but some people, uh, you know, obviously network television has a bigger audience because there's no fee. Do they? To pay, I, I mean, yeah. Because there's, there's, there's mm-hmm. no way to, um, there's, they don't have any, uh, Evidence to prove that linear has more viewership than streaming services. I would think it's in more households, though. I don't know. Because you don't have to pay for it. But that don't mean people are watching it more, though. Like, you, you, I, I, like I have ABC on my, but I don't watch ABC that much. I watch streaming services more. Hmm. Well, some people don't have streaming services. And I'm sure there's way, way exponentially, if you look at how many people have Disney Plus as opposed to how many people just have. That don't mean they're watching it, though. Yeah, that's all. You can have it. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure, I think I'm, I'm sure way more people got available. ABC, but mm-hmm. that don't mean they're watching it more. All right, well, that is your rumor report. All right. Now we got front page news next. What are we talking about? STDs are on the oh, rise. Boy. And we'll talk about which ones during the first year of the pandemic, really, those numbers went up. Goodness gracious. All right. No baby was born. <laughs> <laughs> you married? want that to be news? <laughs> baby <laughs> born? All right. We'll get to it next. Oh. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning. 